Hey guys, welcome, welcome back. Okay, when I started this channel, I had like a strict plan in my mind. Videos that I needed to make in order to like start filming like reading vlogs and just have fun with it. I don't know why, I just needed to sort everything out, including my books, my room, and now I have to do some kind of a wrap up because it's April and I haven't done one in so long. Like, God, I feel like almost a year at this point. Do I even want to talk about 30 books non-stop in this video? Probably not. So I've been thinking maybe I should like scrap it out completely or should I just make a March wrap up? What should I do? And I decided to tell you about the best books I read in 2024 so far. Basically, it's a best books of the first trimester of the year. I have my computer here and what I really wanna do is to kind of make a little tradition at the beginning of all of these videos. I'm gonna show you my stats. We'll talk about my reading goal, how far along I am and probably we should just do like a favorite book of the year so far. It might stay the same, might change throughout the year. I don't know how often I'm gonna make these videos. We'll see. Maybe I'll start making like monthly wrap-ups. You know guys, tell me what do you want because I have no idea. I love doing wrap-ups but they're kind of a hustle and I'm always like behind the schedule with them but I do update my Goodreads like religiously so let's be friends there if you want to see like what I read in basic basically like real time. <laughs> okay, here are my stats. I'll show them to you on the screen. You can pause and look through. I'm not gonna like talk through all of them, but I specifically restarted my story graph for these stats. Like I love the beautiful little graphics that they do. It's so cute. About my reading goal, first of all, I wanted to read 70 books at the beginning of the year. And now since my reading year is going so good, like I haven't written a slam, like I, I'm reading like crazy and I'm so just happy and joyful about it. I kind of want to change it to 100. Even though it's really ambitious, I haven't done this ever. So I'm kind of like excited, but I don't know if I should just like keep it to 70. Maybe I'm gonna get into like a huge slump later this year and I just don't want to get disappointed. We'll start with mentioning a whole, actually literally two series. Cause I don't think that I've rated books in Blood and Ash universe less than four stars. But two more spoilers, I will talk about the first book from Blood and Ash. I don't know how far I'm gonna get with this video. I'm planning on making like little cards for each book so you can screenshot in case you want to read it with all the info. Basically I have genre, tropes, spice level, everything like that. Also for some books I have my own little rating that I kind of invented. It's not like an invention but I just decided to settle on my own rating. I'm struggling a lot with reading my books. I have my own little rating on Goodreads. So for some of these books, I'm gonna show you my own little rating in case you're wondering. From Blood and Ash is basically just a romanticy new adult. It's quite spicy. I would say like three out of five for the first book and later on it gets spicier and spicier. If you talk about the tropes, I feel like it's the chosen one, forbidden love and also bodyguard trope. That was really cool. Basically, our main character is a maiden. I hope I say this right, because I read the books in Russian, so I may not know the specific pronunciation and terms. Simply speaking, no one can talk to her, no one can touch her, she's always covered. She has to say pure to take part in the ritual. And at this point, I was like, what the hell? But since chapter one, we understand that. Our main character is no saint, nor she wants to be one. One of the first encounters we get with her, she's actually at a public house looking for some sort of an experience. This is actually where she meets our love interest who later on becomes one of her guards. This whole series builds up so fast. It has such a crazy mix of tropes and plot twists. So far I managed three books in Blood and Ash and one in Flesh and Fire. I'm sorry, like all of these names are so confusing and kind of so similar, so I have no idea which book is which. Overall, I'd say it's a four-star series in general for me. It's very spicy, very chaotic, but this is why it's so entertaining. Ah! Next book is brilliant. I love it so much. We're talking about Ruthless Vows by Rebecca Ross. It's a young adult romance. As for the tropes for this book, oh, I don't know if it's gonna be like a a little spoiler, but basically we have obviously pain pals, forbidden love, and amnesia. I hope I'm allowed to say all of this. No, hear me out. This duology is the most beautiful 
war romanticy I've ever read. Not that the plot of these books is flawless. No, but the world, the way I can tell you I was there, I swear. Okay, this is what I wrote on my Goodreads right after finishing this book. If you'd ask me to describe this story to you or how it feels to read these books, I'd say dark world with sunlight picking through, but also green fields, flowers in the overgrown garden. Sound of book pages turning and typing on an old school typewriter. Fun fact, I used to have one as a child and kind of want to ask my grandpa to bring it back to me. And it's actually true, I still want to. Smell of dust and freshly baked bread. This world is comforting and scary all at the same time. Honestly, 100% I would recommend. I can't wait to get my hands on physical copies and give this whole duology a reread. Oh goodness gracious, this book. I don't understand how I still don't have a physical copy. Honestly, two physical copies, because the one in Russian is so pretty. It has like a special art cover and it looks so good. So I'm planning on getting like two physical copies soon. So this was Ali's first YA book. And I was like, okay, I'm not really into YA anymore. Like I love a little bit of like more of a spicy books for myself. I guess I was in the mood, right? About the plot, our main girlie, Mallory, she used to be a chess genius. Before something happens to her father or with her father and she stops and now she has to take care of her entire family, her mother's sick. This is where her best friend asks her to play like a chess charity event. So she goes there and casually beats Nolan, who is actually a current chess world champion. And the guy kind of becomes a little bit obsessed with her. But the main thing for our girlie is that she gets the opportunity to play chess full time and get like a good loads of money. You guess it, I had to include Powerless. This a new fantasy sensation for the tropes, it's enemies to lovers, brother's love triangle kind of going on. The slow burn that leaves you with nothing but dread at the end. Check. <laughs> this book set in the world where you don't get to leave if you don't have some kind of a magical power. So you can guess it, our main character Peyton actually is an ordinary, but her father taught her how to fake it. She's also like a very skillful thief. But it's all until one day our girl saves this prince on the street. And this is how people actually pick her to take part in the per Persian? The Persian. Basically like a magical Hunger Games. Yeah, and the sad prince is actually one of the contestants too. I'm still sure this book was influenced by so many other fantasy series, like I can vividly see it. But it's also like so good because of it. I can, again, reread and reread my favorite books in other different forms with different characters over and over again. I don't mind. Also the ending of this one is fucking insane. It's like thank you but not thank you. <laughs> I forgot I have this book here. Picking Days is on Sundays. It was such a random pick. Like, I just found this book on Goodreads and I was like, huh, sounds good. Because I really love Second Chance, Friends to Strangers to Lovers, Fake Dating. Here we have two high school besties who fall apart at prom after our main character tries to tell her best friend that she's in love with him. But unfortunately, it turns into a disaster. They never speak again until... Four years later, she meets him at like a random bar and surprise, now they fake date. But guess what? It's one big miscommunication trope. If you hate it, don't read this book. Next is betting on you, Lynn Painter. Rivals to friends to lovers. Fake dating, co-walkers. By the way, this one's set in the same world as better than the movies. When I found out, it became like so much better. Bailey, we love her. She's me, I'm her, you know, the drill. Meets Charlie at the airport and immediately hates him. But she has to spend this whole long flight home with him and they talk about like the experiences with divorced parents and this is it, they, you know, part ways. A year later, they get a job at the same place and slowly become kind of friendly. Also, they have this whole bad going on and then they start fake dating to help Bailey to get rid of her mom's new boyfriend. Let's say Lynn just knows how to write a YA rom-com. I got another coffee because I talk too much and drink too much.
I mean, it only makes sense that Love Theoretically is next because I've read quite a few of Ailey Hazelwood books over the last couple of months. This one is quite spicy. And the tropes are fake identity, brother's fake girlfriend, workplace romance, and obviously women's stem. So our main girl here, Elsie, she does this fake dating thing where she goes on dates, like family events with people, nothing intimate. Obviously, for each date, she creates like a fake identity fake personality, privacy, duh. So she plays this nice guy's girlfriend for a while. His whole family loves her, except for his older brother, Jack. In real life, Elsie is actually a theoretical physicist. I really wants this like really cool MIT position. Surprise, surprise. Jack is one of the main people she has to go through like interviews and stuff to get that position. Again, let me remind you, she creates fake identities. So Jack thinks that she's a librarian, but my main object of obsession in this book is Jack. If to quote myself, I'll be crystal clear honest. Jack's character healed some part of my poor treated by her partners in her formative years in her girly. And that's so true. Jack is like perfect. He's my new favorite book boyfriend. I was really late to the party with this book, but the next one is Yours Truly by Abby Jimenez. Tropes are workplace romance, pen pals, literal pen pals. Also, they both are doctors. No, but the amount of times I wanted to pick this book up last year and never did, shame on me. Brianna here goes through some really shitty time. She's about to finalize her divorce and there's this new doctor who appears out of thin air and kind of competes with her for this position she really deserves spoiler he does not jacob actually deals with shit of his own this is why he's at this new hospital and brianna this cool really respected doctor she seems to hate him i mean what a man's gonna do he writes her an actual handwritten letter i'm telling you i died there on these letters but it's not even all he actually decides to donate his kidney to brianna's brother and do it anonymously she finds out though so in return she actually has to fake date him i really love the setting and oh my god jacob oh my god jacob i'm so disappointed in myself for not reading this sooner this is it. Happily Never After by Lean Painter. I feel like I'm just stuck with the same authors over and over again, and I feel so comfortable. <laughs> also one of the new releases, Romance New Adult, which is kind of rare air for Lean Painter. Tropes are strangers to friends to lovers, co-walkers, of course, sworn off relationships. Safi here needs a way out. It's her wedding day, and her husband-to-be is a cheater. But sadly, she cannot do this herself, because her entire life like just tangled up with this man. You get it, Safi's best friend hires Max to object on her wedding day. You know, casually spill the tea. Afterwards, Safi and Max spend like an entire night talking. A few months later, she gets a text like, do you wanna help with objections? Yeah, Max really needs her help because uh, it has to be like a girl who objects mostly. For Sophie, this gig sounds interesting and it's also like so cool to help a good guy out. Honestly, it's such a fun new idea. Like the objectors, what? <laughs> this is kind of funny, but so cool. Just such a light book to read. I really loved it. You already get it. I'm on my train with romance and the same authors. So this is why the next book is Mr. Ron Number by Lynn Painter again. The tropes are pen pals, forced proximity, brother's best friend, and two-person love triangle. A very obvious plot twist. Like at this point, I'm pretty sure I have like one or two books left on my Lynn Painter reading list. Again, this book is nothing innovative, but God, I had a great time reading it. Olivia's life is a disaster. Like everything is wrong she has to move in with her brother because she literally burned down her apartment building also her boyfriend cheats and she loses her job all kind of in one day oh did i mention her brother's hot roommate slash best friend okay whatever but in the middle of her pity party with beer she gets this 
a really flirty message from a wrong number somehow they cannot stop texting each other and the messages in this book is the best part of it all like they are so funny honestly maybe i went too far with a five star rating for this book but i'll let it have it hate mail but don't know chatty i'm pretty sure it's a debut novel but i haven't checked it so don't quote me on this the tropes are pen pals like literal pen pals over the years and secret identity this is what i'm willing to tell you i'm gonna be brutal honest i picked this book up just because of this really pretty pink cover if i ever to publish a book i'm showing this cover as a reference yes back in fifth grade our main character gets a penemy. A boy named Luca writes her like the rudest letters ever to scare her off. But they stick to this pen pal thing all the way through high school and college. No, no, me lives in Miami and does this like a TV weather report thing. This is where she gets a new letter from Luca after like two years of like absolute silence and he kind of challenges her to find him. I hate how I can predict endings to pretty much every romance book i read now i feel like this is why i just sit back and enjoy like how well read i am in the romance genre obviously yeah but this book was such a great time and the cover is so pretty oh my god okay guys here come april books just for the summer by abby jimenez i feel like it's last week's release okay the tropes are pan pals found family dating pact and it has like a lot to do with mental health also cheers to my first six star read of the year basically so far this book is my favorite of the year abby i love you i really needed like an exceptionally good book one of our main characters emma reads a reddit post where a guy named justin asks basically people if he's an asshole for naming his really ugly dog after his best friend who kind of left him with the, like an apartment lease and everything to leave with his girlfriend and now he has to find like a new apartment and everything the main thing about this post is that justin tells everyone that he has like this lucky charm type of a curse on him basically he dates a girl they break up and the next person the girl dates is the one basically like you know marriage and everything this thing makes emma to text justin because she has the same curse so this is why she rearranges all of her plans she's a traveling nurse with her best friend and they go to minnesota instead of hawaii so she and justin can fake not fake like arrange date each other then break up to kind of like cancel each other's curses this is only my second book by Abby Jimenez but her men like they are so perfect I would kiss Justin on the mouth the moment I saw him guys highly highly recommend it's a new release it's beautiful it has a beautiful cover it's a beautiful inside and out book like please read it I have a goal to find 24 five star books by the end of the year you know to be trendy and make this like 24 books of 2024 thing. I couldn't do it last year, so I really want to accomplish this. And so far I have a great reading year, so we might we might actually do this. I used to be more of like a romantic type of girl, and now I feel like I'm a full-on rom-com stan. Like I cannot stop reading these books. They're so good, so light, so fun, but also with like really good problematics inside. So I feel like 2024 might be my like full-on romance era. I love it for myself. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you found something to add to your own personal TBRs. If so, let me know. I need to know if I fulfilled my booktuber duties. I don't know, maybe I'll see you at the beginning of May with like a monthly wrap up for April or we'll stick to these kind of updates. I still don't know. Let me know what do you think, guys. I really need like a second, third, fourth opinion. As for now, have the best the rest of your day and the rest of the week as always. And I'll see you very, very soon. Bye!